we're going to start to eat um, whole foods, so not foods that have been processed or cooked. We'll see that our body metabolizes them and uses them the right way. And cholesterol levels drop very drastically and heart disease goes down. So if we start refining the foods, we lose our B vitamins, we lose vitamin E, we lose magnesium out of the foods as we start to process those and break those foods down. Oils are taken out of the foods as you process them and break them down. So important oils, vitamin E, essential fatty acids, and as you heat an oil, it transfers from a healthy oil into a trans fat. And so a trans fat is very damaging to the, to the arteries. Trans fat would be found in fried food. So anything that's fried has trans fat. It's going to heat it up to a high temperature. The high temperature breaks down the fat. Now that trans fat, very damaging to the arteries, causes damage, and the cholesterol sticks to it. So uh, as we transport the vegetables for a long ways, uh, vitamin C starts to break down. As we heat it up, vitamin C starts to break down. So we're saying buy local, organic, fresh vegetables and fruits when you can buy them. They haven't been transferred very far, and there's going to be more vitamins and nutrients in it. So here's some things that we might want to consider eating differently for our heart. Uh, whole grains, we talked about the whole foods have more nutrients in them. Uh, omega-6, this is found in a lot of our processed foods in our vegetable oil or soy oil. Omega-6 is an inflammatory type of an oil. Omega-3 is an anti-inflammatory thing. We want to have less inflammation. Less inflammation means less damage to the arteries. Uh, we want to eliminate trans fats, so try to reduce our fried foods. We want to reduce carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are full of sugar. Sugar increases heart disease. We want cold water fish like <coughs> salmon, trout, and things like that because that's loaded with omega-3, which is that anti-inflammatory type of fat. We want monounsaturated oils, which are not saturated. We want unsaturated oils, and that's like your vegetable oils or your uh, olive oil. Vegetable protein, so from broccoli and, and things like that, versus animal protein. We want seven servings of fruits and vegetables a day. So, another example would be about a pound, of, a pound of fruits and vegetables a day are about the size of your fist, is what we're looking for, at least that much fruits and vegetables every day. Seven servings. Eat every two hours. We eat large meals, our insulin levels spike and causes our metabolism to change. So, we want to be Constantly eating a little bit throughout the day. Avoid stimulants and try to use sea salt versus regular, regular salt. Uh, if we have too much salt in our diet, salt helps us retain water. More water means more fluid in the vessels, which means more blood pressure. So exercise is important. Uh, new recommendations say 30 to 60 minutes of exercise every day. Uh, it helps our heart work better. So when we look at a heart and a blood vessel, let's say we start to slowly add cholesterol and, and atherosclerosis to this blood vessel. Just like in a, in a river, if you have a river that's flowing down, down, down the road, and you, every day you throw a rock in this river, over time you're going to build up a dam into the river, but the river keeps flowing. Every day the river is flowing and lots, lots of water is moving. That river is going to naturally reroute and change so that it keeps the same amount of water moving down the river without even with the throwing a few rocks in there. So if you slowly add atherosclerosis to the blood vessels and we're exercising, we're going to be allowing our body to kind of reroute that blood to different parts of the body and we'll actually build new, stronger blood vessels. Some of the blood vessels that were smaller before will get bigger and it'll help. we're going to prevent any kind of occlusion to any part of the body through exercise. But if we don't exercise and we don't have a lot of blood flow moving through there, and now we're getting atherosclerosis, uh, a slow-moving bloodstream, and that, that's going to allow that plaque to build up a little bit more, and we're not going to be able to accommodate or reroute those blood vessels the same way. So even if we have some, some blockages, if it's slow blockages that happen, and we're exercising, we can often offset that. What we're finding with a lot of, with a lot of new studies is that it's not the slow steady accumulation of atherosclerosis, it's when it goes from none to very to a very much atherosclerosis where one little chunk breaks off. 
that comes from inflammation and damage to the arteries. So cardiovascular exercise, very important. Weight training, a couple times a week, build stronger muscles, build better blood flow throughout the body. Stress reduction. Uh, we need to take time to slow down, reduce that stress. Reducing stress reduces blood pressure, reduces cholesterol. So yoga, massage, exercise, chiropractic, these things help your body reduce stress. Uh, some of the nutrients that are important, I have a handout for you. I think it's the first page. Um, Omega-3, probably the most important ingredient to add in. Uh, tons of studies are being done on Omega-3. Uh, in the last 10 years, I think there's been about uh, 15, 20,000 studies done on Omega-3. So tons of studies being done on Omega-3. Uh, all these studies are showing huge benefits for heart. Uh, normal recommendations right about 1 to 1.5 grams a day. Lots of the studies are showing with heart disease where they at least double that recommendation with people taking at least 3 grams a day, especially if you have a family history of heart disease or you've already had a, a, a heart problem. So if you've already had a heart, heart attack or heart problems, they'll tell you to take lots of omega-3. Uh, you can talk to your doctor about how much omega-3 you should be taking. Omega-3 will, will Decrease blood pressure, decrease, decreases triglycerides and cholesterol. Um, actually helps to thin the blood. So people that are taking an aspirin a day to help thin the blood, they can actually find out that they can almost get the same benefits from omega-3 without the side effects. So that's kind of a nice thing. Taurine and carnitine, these are amino acids that help our body basically build energy. So these, these next three things help, help the heart have enough energy to pump. To pump Taurine, CoQ10, and, and, and carnitine. Um, our body usually should be able to make enough of these things, <clears throat> but as we start taking medications, we start aging, we lose the ability to, to make these things. So sometimes supplementation is important with those. You see the biggest benefit with people that have, again, these are people that are studying, uh, people that have already had heart problems, or people that, are, that don't show any family history, or that don't have a lot of heart disease, um, these things are not really as, as beneficial, but if you have a family history of heart disease, you, they've done studies on that, they're saying these things are, are very beneficial. Uh, B vitamins, these are your antioxidants, so these help offset the damage, the inflammation, the free radicals. Uh, B vitamins are very important. Helps to metabolize that homocysteine, which is the biggest predictor of heart disease. Calcium and magnesium, these these are, these are basically helping your heart contract and relax. We need calcium to help the heart contract. We need magnesium to help the, the heart relax. If don't have enough magnesium, the blood vessels contract, heart, the blood pressure goes up. So added magnesium it helps the blood, vessel, the blood vessels relax and, and decreases the blood pressure. Did you say that um, the third one, that CoQ10? CoQ10, Is yeah. that in the new messages? No, CoQ10 is, is actually made by your body. Um, it's, I think it's called ubiquinone, is the actual name of CoQ10. Um, I, think, I think I wrote down what that says. CoQ10 would be in um, animal muscle tissue, some vegetables, specifically spinach and broccoli. Easily broken down by heating. So that's why the fresh whole foods are going to be important. Um, but yeah, your body usually kind of make it after the age of 25, you start using it less efficiently. So there's recommendations on there for all those for all those different things. Um, you can talk to me about any one of those that you have questions on. So we talked about omega-3, reduces C reactive protein, reduces blood clots, reduces inflammation, lowers blood pressure. So this is the most important one. Um, talk about the tarring, strengthens the heart muscle. <coughs> Natural diuretics and antioxidant lowers blood pressure. A lot of the a lot of the energy drinks have taurine in it. Um, not super high on energy drinks, but they do have taurine in them. CoQ10, energy for the cells, twice as much CoQ10 in any of the heart tissues. Made by the mitochondria, which is the energy producer <coughs> of the cells. Heart muscle has the highest concentration. Uh, Drugs, specifically blood pressure and cholesterol medications, uh, deplete our body of B.